Hi, I'm Melissa Maley here with Home Improvement Specialist Todd Hendricks and today we're going to be installing the zip-up ceiling system. Now this is a great system and it's designed to go in really easy and it's fit for a variety of spaces. Today we're going to be in this office building. What we're going to start with today is kind of go through the process of installing the zip-up system on an interior application and our first step is going to be installing the wall trim. But before we get into the wall trim, let me introduce you to the tools we will be using. Zip-up ceiling does not require any specialty tools, only a few basic ones. We will be using a cordless drill, drywall screws, a tape measure, two types of squares since we will be cutting our panels by hand, safety glasses, a utility knife, a heavy pair of snips, and a mini pry bar. We will also be using a roto zip to cut a hole for a light and a miter box to cut our main rails. The zip-up ceiling is made out of three interlocking components. The first, the wall trim. It's got a little lip and the panels are going to slide into that and the main rail locks into this feature. Our panel, which is the visible surface of the ceiling, they're a foot wide, and our main rail in which the panel is going to snap into. The next part of the process to getting your ceiling up is installing the wall trim around the perimeter of the room. I've already installed most of it. This is the last piece to go in. What you do is in the corners, you miter one corner and leave the other one a straight cut. That way they slide together and make a tight bond. And then you just take some drywall screws and secure it up to the wall framing. While Todd finishes prepping the room, we're going to start working on our panel. Our panels, again, are a foot wide. So to begin, we're going to have to do some work to get ready so we can install. On your first and last panel, you're going to have to remove the bead or cut the panel to the right width. I simply take a nice sharp straight edge and I score along the side of the bead. Gently, making sure I don't go through to the panel, but just stay alongside the bead. And the bead will slowly peel away from the panel. And now we are going to cut our panels to length. I have already taken a sharp utility knife and already pre-cut the bead so that it folds away very gently. This way, when we go to cut with our snips, we don't risk crushing the ends. And as you can see, this vinyl, it's rigid and yet it's flexible. So you don't need specialty tools. You can just cut by hand. Our panels come pre-cut back at the end. This allows it to slide easily into the wall trim. But once we make the cut, we will need to take these back ourselves. You only need 3 fourths an inch. You don't need to go much further than that. So I'm going to cut into my bead so far as to cut into it to the panel, but not through the panel. And then I'm going to score along the side to make it easier to come off. And then we're going to take my knife and gently rock the bead back and forth along that cut mark. And as you see, the bead just very gently breaks away. Okay, we're ready to start putting our first panel in. We've got a supply air ductwork here that we're going to have to cut a hole in for our first panel. We've already taken the measurements. We're going to take the panel outside, cut the hole, then we'll reinstall it. Okay, we've marked out where that piece of ductwork is going to go, and now I'm just simply going to use a razor knife and cut it from the back side. And you just score it a couple times each direction, and then the pieces will just pop out. So we start with our first panel, which we remove the bead from, and we're just going to slide that into the bottom lip of the wall trim. It helps if you start on one, one corner on one side of the wall trim. This will help make sure the panel feeds itself into place. The next step in the process is to cut all the main rails to length. Electric miter box really makes the process go faster, although a handsaw would work. Always wear safety glasses when you're cutting this material just to uh, protect your eyes. Todd is using special tinted safety glasses, but yours do not have to be. Just make sure you're wearing safety glasses whenever you cut anything on a saw. Now it's time, after we got our first panel in, to put our first main rail in. You get the rail positioned in here sideways, and then you turn it on edge so it slides up and locks into the wall trim. You position it just above the first zip on the panel, and you just start pressing it in from one side, working your way down.
We'll take some sheet metal screws, screw it up to the supports of the ceiling. When shooting in your screws, it's important not to over tighten the screw. That way it doesn't bend or warp your main rail. Install the vent covering once you have positioned the unit over the hole correctly. Next, we insert the second panel into the wall trim and we slide it along into one, the other side of the rail. And then we're just gonna repeat. And we're gonna go panel, rail, panel, rail across the room. The most common lighting used with the zip up ceiling is the can light. It's useful because you have a wide variety of positions within our rail structure to get your placement just right. What's great about can lighting is it can actually mount to either side of our main rails directly to allow you to position it exactly in the room where you want to be. We're only going to put one can in this room because it's only 10 by 10. This rail actually falls dead center in the room so what we decided to do is just push the can as tight to this as we can. We're only going to be an inch off center. There is a process where you can cut these rails throw some blocks in, move this can to dead center. We just didn't find it necessary on this application. Okay, now that we get the panel snap back in and the can light is above, I'm gonna reach over to the side and mark the center of my can. And I know that it's just off the rail, so I'm gonna mark the center. You don't have to be exactly accurate because I'm gonna use a rotozip, zip Just like when you work with drywall, we'll just start it, make our circle, and then put our trim on. Finish your lighting according to the manufacturer's instructions. So just like we did on the first panel, we're going to go from one corner of the wall trim to the other and seat our panel inside there. And then we're going to slide it down and do the same thing we did on our first panel. And carefully edge the panel into place along the wall trim before we zip it up into the rail. One of the great features of our zip up ceiling is that we are actually designed to be removable so that you can access not only to put in accessories like lighting, but if you had to get in and access for maintenance like plumbing or electrical work, you can do so. So to remove a panel, you're going to push up in the middle, enough to create a gap in the panel that you can slip a flat object. I like to use a mini uh, pry bar here, but you can use anything with a strong straight edge, and you're going to slip that inside the gap you create and just gently pull down. And this is enough to separate the seal between the panel and the rail. And you're gonna do that on both sides. Give it a gentle pull down, create a gap and just gently pull down from both sides. And that's it. As you saw, it was easy, it's fast, and it's gonna give you a nice clean look over traditional ceiling systems for years to come. And it also provides accessibility to wires and water lines for future access. Also, check us out on the web at www.zipupceiling.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Twitter.